Let's do it again. Let's, 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 let, Hannah's going to play and we're going to begin to pray the glory of God into the room. Amen. And let's just, I mean, he's here. That means we're going to acknowledge him. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this girl's anointed to bring the glory of God into a room now. And it's because she just loves, she just loves Jesus and you can see it all over her. She's just got that grace on her life. I said, we need the presence of God in the room. So you just open up and fill the room with what you do. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that tonight you are magnified. That every devil within a county of here is nervous now because you're exalted in this room. That the kingdom of God has come and your will is being done right now because, Lord God, you're here. The king is in the house. And we give you praise and magnify that name. Oh, Lord, we're alive. We've got choices. And we choose to speak that name that's above every name. To say Jesus with our hearts and with our heads and praise you with our hands and magnify the king that rose from the dead. And we praise you. And so now, Lord, we pray in every heart and every life that, Holy Spirit, you will make alive the word that's in the room tonight. And that that living word, you, Lord Jesus, are the living word. And as the word comes, you manifest that word, that, Father, all the promises of God in you are yes, and in you, amen. To the glory of God the Father. And so now we rebuke every assignment of hell against these precious children of God. I rebuke the stronghold of unbelieving religion. In the name of Jesus, you're a devil. You bow and leave in Jesus' name. We bind that position spirit and we command you to loose the people of God and Heavenly Father we thank you that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and so Lord I'm just going to prophesy all night long the reason for your coming the reason for your dying the reason for your resurrection and the reason for your ascension and today Lord God we are the people of God only because of your magnificent love. And we have what you say we have. We can do what you say we can do. Thank you for the healing anointing on my life. But Lord, thank you for the faith of the believer. Tonight, be magnified. Come on, just give God a shout of praise. Can we do it together? Come on, we magnify you, Lord. We glorify your great name. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, baby. Come on, give Hannah a great big thank you tonight. I love you, honey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, tell your neighbor you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. Amen. Now, you may be seated if you can. If you need to run around the room, take a lap. Hallelujah. God's good. Isn't he good? I love you tonight, and I'm so thrilled tonight that you're here. In the healing school with us, and uh, and by the way, we have no. If you didn't get notes already, we want to make sure that you get those. You can take those home with you. I'll do the best I can to cover them. If I don't cover them, don't get nervous, because if I'm still here, you got the answers for the blanks, and so we can make sure that gets filled in. But I'm not near as I'm not near as interested. Please understand, notes are for you to be able to take home and cruise on. Now, this is what I know. I know there's a healing grace on my life. I know that. Um, I, I could tell you the story, but I don't think I want to take the time. But there's a healing grace on my life. It's okay. It, it doesn't make me any better than anybody else. But I, I do want you to know that that's, that's true. But I can tell you, if you get, when you get healed tonight, yeah. that you're the one that has to hang on to it. Yeah. you got to renew your mind because everything I'm teaching you, you could have gotten right out of your Bible and it's called an inheritance because of what Jesus has done for you. 
Amen. If you think God's arbitrary picking and choosing who he wants healed, you just need to read Mark chapter 5 and you'll get over it. Yeah. Because that woman with the issue of blood tugged on his garment and the power went out of Jesus, but Jesus didn't know where it went. He said, who touched my clothes? Y'all remember this? It's Mark chapter 5. If you ever started reading the New Testament, you probably made it to Mark. <laughs> Mark chapter 5. But the glorious truth of that word is that the Bible says virtue went out of him. The word is dunamis. Power went out of him. He just didn't know where it went. He just knew it went. And so when she came, she was healed of that flow of blood and healed of, of that infirmity. Uh, after 12 years, she was broke and sicker than she'd ever been. And then she runs into Jesus. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And so she touches the hem of his garment. Power of God shoots out of Jesus. And again, he doesn't know where the power went. He just know it went. And um, I, I, I can feel the power of God when I'm praying for people. I can feel it leave my hands. And so I know it went. Amen. I just don't want it to bounce back at me. I want you to keep it. Amen. And that's what believers do. But he's, well, she came and told him all the truth, and this is what Jesus told her. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Now, wait a minute. We back up, and Jesus said it. it the, the Bible says virtue went out of him and made her whole. But what turned the virtue loose? What turned the power loose? He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go now and be whole of your plague. And what I'm wanting to say to you, again, is Jesus didn't pick her. She picked him. Are you picking him tonight? I, that's all right. I'm going to check you out for a minute. I'm looking for somebody that I can see faith in their face. Hallelujah. And so I, 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 I'm thankful for the word of God, and I'm thankful tonight that you're here to hear it, and I'm when I preach this to you, I want you to preach it to somebody else this week. Amen? Because I'm going to preach the good news, and you're going to run into somebody that's going to need to hear it. You say, well, what if they don't believe? That's not your business. Your business is just to take it and to release it into people that need it. Amen? Good news. Amen. Come on, somebody shout confidence. Come on, we've already been there. I'm not going to re-preach all that, but Ephesians chapter number 5, the Bible says we have boldness and confidence with access by Jesus Christ. Amen? What's the result of you being in Jesus Christ? Boldness, confidence, and access. Come on, those are great words, aren't they? Come on, how many people, I'm just a worm, I'm not worthy. Well, we all know that, buster. He didn't, he didn't save you because you're worthy. He saved you because he loves you. And he's leaning into you. Amen. All of the grace of God came because he set his affections on you when you were acting like a Yehu. Come on, how many of you ever acted like a Yehu like I did? Some of you are too young. I got socks older than some of you. But it's important for you to get this now. It's important for you to know that everybody gets an opportunity tonight to get a miracle. Amen. Amen. I'm as ready as I can be for you to get healed. Amen. Isn't that good news? Amen. And the word of God will, is like seed. I'm going to drop some holy seed into your hearts tonight. And the Bible says that it's going to come up, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God, the word of God is like seed. So it went out to sow the, the ground that was prepared for it. Produce 30, 60, and 100 full. And so I believe that God's going to do something really amazing. And uh, how many of you, this is your first night to be here? Let me see your hand if this is your first night. Man, 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 okay. Well, I, now I think tomorrow we're actually going to put this on YouTube. And so you can catch up with all this. Matter of fact, if you've been here for a while, you, you might want to go back and re-listen to some of this. But thank God for the word, amen? I'm telling you, I, I, the word of God's would change my life. Amen? A lot of things, but when the word came alive in me, it just changed everything for me. And so I want to talk to you about uh, the, the conversion. I want to talk to you about hear and be healed. And that's the title of tonight's 
message that I'm going to bring to you here and be healed. Luke chapter number 5. If you've got your Bible and you've got this in your notes, but sometimes I'll, I may take a rabbit trail and you'll need your Bible. Keep it handy. Amen. But Luke 5 verse 12, he says, and it happened when, when he, Jesus, was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus, and he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, boy, there's a great question. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. I know you can, I just don't know if you will. And then he put his hands on him and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him. Wow, what a great story. Now, Jesus immediately told this guy, said, go show yourselves to the priest and don't, don't put the word out yet. Go to the priest like Moses told you and go show him that you've been cleansed and give him an offering. That's what the law says. When you're cleansed and you don't have leprosy anymore, you bring an offering to the Lord and so forth and you're declared ceremonial clean and you're not infectious anymore and you can go live with your family and hug your kids, okay? And so, but he didn't do that. He began to publish it far and wide. I was a leper and I ran into Jesus and now I'm not. Okay? And so he says, uh, verse number 15, jump down there. It says, however, the report went out concerning him all the more and great multitudes came together. What did they come for? To hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. What did they come? Not just to be healed. They came to hear and be healed. Again, faith, how does faith come? Faith comes by faith comes by hearing. You want to fill that blank in. Faith comes by hearing the word. And it's the, it's the rhema word. It's not just the ability to spit out scripture like a computer. It's not just an intellectual thing because what we said over the last couple of days, faith is, it comes from the heart. You get emotionally connected to it when, as, as deeply as you can. I'm not talking about emotionalism. I'm talking about it being emotionally connected in a very personal way. God spoke it to me, and it means something to me. I, I have in my briefcase still, years ago I went to Washington, D.C., and on my way out of town, um, I had packed my bag. I was ready to go, and so Jackie took me to the airport. I got on an airplane, went to Washington. And uh, when I got to Washington and unpacked my suitcase, I had all kinds of notes all over my suitcase from my sweetheart. Little notes, little pink cards. And they were little love notes to me, but they were encouraging notes to me as well. They were, they were saying things like, you got something to give, Washington, D.C., Buster. And so, praise God, you're anointed to function here. Amen. And she encouraged me with little words like that. Okay? And so those, it, it wasn't, see, I didn't quote you the cards. Hadn't even read them for a while, but they're still in my briefcase. You know why? Because of who spoke those words to me. It was not just what she said, it was who said it that impacted me so deeply. And I was emotionally connected to every syllable. That's the way you're allowed to do the word. And when it does that to you, it will impact you so deeply that it'll go off like a firecracker on the inside of you. A spiritual boom goes off and suddenly you know what is not evident to the outside it's evident on the inside, I just got something that is irrevocable. The word of God was released in me. Amen? When Jesus spoke to this leper, he said, I will. That was all that boy needed. All he needed, I, don't, I know you can, I just don't know if you want to. Jesus said, I want to. Boom. Boom. And all of a sudden, that I want to release that guy into an emotional connection that brought a miracle to him. It was the power of God that did that for him, no doubt about that. But listen, it's the integrity of the author that gives the promise its power in you. It is the integrity, the character of the author that makes the word have power in you. Do you know him? Deeply, profoundly, non-religiously. Yeah, I say the religious from going through the forms without really knowing the, the, the author. Because it's good to be in patterns. How many of you know faith has a rhythm? When you get up in the morning, do you pray and seek God and get in his word? 
Amen? That might be part of the problem. Amen? You let the devil talk before you hear from God. Amen? It's good to be able to lean into Jesus first thing when you, when you get up. Amen? Believe that the promise was given not just to us, it was given to me. Amen? Hear and be healed means that I'm making a connection with the word of God. There's a deposit in my account, and every time I pray, I write a check on the deposit. <laughs> Let me put it this way. If I had a sign up here, I should have done this. I thought about doing it at home, and I didn't do it. But if I had a million dollars in an account, and I had to write a check for 25, how many of you know with the greatest of confidence I could whip that check right out? Uh, for the young people, that's a piece of paper <laughs> that you sign at the bottom, and it's legal tender once you... Just saying. It's a new day. But understand, if I write that check and I know the amount of money that's in that account, here's the idea, that Jesus put every provision in the account and he allows you now in his name to write a check on it. And it's called faith and prayer. I, and my faith to write that check and that knowing that it won't bounce is not because I made the deposits. I'm making all the withdrawals. He's the one that did that part. Are you with me? And so it's important for you to get this idea, digest it, let it sink down into you that you're not begging for answers from God. If you are begging God, you're not in faith. I can tell you right now, you're not in faith, and you're not in humility either, because you submit to truth. False humility is acting unworthy all the time, unworthy, unworthy, unworthy. I wouldn't be successfully married today if Jackie acted that way all the time. I need somebody to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with me and rebuke me every once in a while. Amen? Amen? But she didn't have to do that very often. I'm nice. But, but, but it's important for you to grasp, just grab a hold of this as best you can. That God, faith comes from a relationship and it comes from the inside of you. Amen. The word of God comes alive on you. I put it down this way. Listen to this. It, again, faith comes from the inside. It's where your soul and spirit dance together because they're both listening to the same music. Come on, somebody. Now, it's not just my spirit, but my soul is now getting the word of God, and I'm acknowledging him in my soul. My conscious mind is, is wrapped around God in worship, and I'm thanking him for his promises. And my inner man's doing flip-flops while my soul is in agreement with the word of God, and suddenly the dance begins to the rhythm of the word. And so Jesus said over and over again, and I've given, I, I don't know if I've given you all the notes or not, but, but Jesus said, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Now, I'm supposing that most everybody that Jesus was surrounded by probably had ears. But he wasn't talking about the natural ear. He was talking about the ability to hear from heaven, the ability to tune into the voice of God and to know it's God speaking to me. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Repeatedly, different times, a lot of parable, uh, parabolic expressions that he would use for that. And so tonight, I'm believing, and I'm, I'm, I, I prayed the Ephesians 1 prayer of you several times. And that is that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. To know the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and his exceeding great power usward who believe. Exceeding great power what? Usward toward us who believe. There's power flying at you right now. I mean, it's like the air you breathe. It's everywhere. Power of God leaning into you. Say, well, how come something ain't happening yet? You haven't released your faith yet. Nothing happens till you do that. And so there's, there's something to, to be said for the Spirit bears witness with us. You remember Romans chapter 8, verse 16, that the Spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are the sons of God. Remember that? Remember this? Have I been so long time with you and have you not known me? 
okay? The Spirit, Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the, the children of God, okay? And so that is to say the Holy Spirit's in this exchange, that while you're hearing me, the Holy Spirit's preaching on the inside of you. And it's, and it's a message. It's, it's, it's percolating on the inside of you. And it's going, to reach, it's going to reach boiling point. I mean, 212 degrees water boils. But my grandson was reminding me of that the other day in the kitchen. He found out the boiling point for water. And it's important that, that Holy Spirit's in there heating that truth up, and all of a sudden, boom, it bursts into a boil in you. And that's what God wants. He wants it to burst into a, a glorious revelation for you. Number four, it's a childlike faith that brings breakthrough. It's my ability, very much like a child that expects the natural things of a loving family to happen in his life or her life, and it's a childlike faith. I trust my mom and dad. Are you with me? And it's, and it's, very, much, and it's very much that. Um, this, this, and I'm going to use the word converted. Everybody say converted. It's Matthew chapter number 11 in your notes. Matthew, excuse me, Matthew chapter 18. There, we may make it to chapter 11 in a minute. Verse 2 through 4, and listen to what it says. And Jesus called the little children to him and set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little child, little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, Whoever humbles himself as this little child is great in the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that powerful? So what what was the key ingredient there? He's not suggesting childishness or immaturity. What he is is sharing is a trust factor that children are born with as they adore their parents. I mean, think about it for a second. You get a little nipper about this big. And here's his daddy's big voice, and he sees his hairy arms and great big strong hands and so forth. And it doesn't matter if you're short. If you're this tall, you're a giant, okay? And he looks up at you or she looks up at you, and you look massive, and your voice is deep. It's the power of God is what they're learning from that. They're learning the characteristic of fatherhood. And then mom comes, and she's sweet and soft and amazing, Amen, beautiful, and suddenly they get their picture of grace out of mommy. Every once in a while, the rules reverse <laughs> when Buster does something stupid, okay? Jackie had a mommy voice, but she talks like Minnie Mouse most of the time. But I want you to understand, what are the characteristics that happen in a little guy or a little girl when they look up and they see these giant people walking around the earth, and they know that not only are they one of them, but these people care for me, okay? That's the nature of what Jesus is saying here. Unless you be converted, the word converted means to go from one state to another, except you, that unless you are converted and become like someone who trusts God, the fatherhood of God, it it means, converted means I'm going from unbelief to confidence. It means I'm going from being an outcast to great hospitality and acceptance. It means I'm going from being a stranger to a joint heir and a child of God. It means that I'm going from sickness to health. It means I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk with God in a dynamic that has love and assurance in it. Instead of an orphan spirit, children believe. When I was, when I was about four years old, uh, we actually lived in Dayton, Ohio. Mom used to work at WLWD. It used to be uh, WLWD. Now it's WDTN down in Kettering. And so in any case, her first gig on television was to work at, in Dayton. And so we lived in Kettering. And, uh, and so, in any case, I was about four years old, and I was watching the original first-run takes of Superman. And so she's getting ready for work in there, doing her makeup and so forth, and I'm watching Superman. I run into the bathroom, and I grab a, grab a towel out of the bathroom, wrap it around my neck, and I would talk kind of dutchy. I couldn't say my R's right, and so I'd say, I'm Patrick Moy. <laughs> and, I, and I told my mom, I said, i Superman. And she said, yeah, whatever, you know, she's doing her makeup. 
I jump up on the toilet seat and expect to fly, and I dove off of that toilet. Well, she didn't go to work that day because she took me to go get stitches in my chin, but I was fully committed to flying that day. Okay? What am I saying to you? Childlike faith believes. There's a natural imagination that hooks up with the possibilities of life. And if they can see it, they'll try to repeat it. Good or bad, they will repeat what you show them. And so that's important for us because we're born, Adam was made in the presence of God. And the only other being that he had to, that looked like him was God. And he walked with him in the cool of the day. And now the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter number 6, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. You remember that? Be what? Imitators of, of God. That means you've got to be able to see him, to imitate him. You've got to know what he's like to imitate him and emulate him. And so it's those characteristics that cause that childlike, I'm living in the kingdom, yes, I am, and God is my father, and the word of God that my father has spoken to me will work because he's the one that said it. It was his notes in my briefcase, and I'm emotionally connected to what he said. I hope I'm helping you, but I'm preaching me happy, I'm telling you. Now, the Holy Spirit sets the, write this down, he sets the atmosphere for breakthrough. The Holy Spirit's the one that really cultivates this environment in us. Matter of fact, Jesus said he will lead you and guide you into all truth and even show you things to come. Ministry of the Holy Spirit, according to Jesus, is that he's going to lead you and guide you. Don't tell me you can't hear from the Holy Spirit or Jesus is a liar. I think maybe I'll take his side on this deal. Hello? He will lead you and guide you into all truth. And show you things to come. He'll make you prophetic if you'll just listen to the Holy Spirit. And so it's important to get that. Now, I know there's a lot of religious folks. And by the way, if you would have offered me religion when I came to Jesus, I would have told you to go fly a kite. Okay? With a couple of explicatives in it. Okay? Because I wasn't interested in your religion. But if Jesus is real and he's alive and he did what the gospel says he's done... This is what I said. If that story's true, it's going to change my life. Guess what? It changed my life. And I'm telling you that Jesus saved a rascal like me. And if he can save me, he can save anybody. Amen. And so I just want you to, and, and with my insecurities and with all the junk in my life and with the things that insecurity produced in my life and all those kinds of things, I'm telling you, I was, I was a mess. And then Jesus found me, and my whole life straightened out. And suddenly, I wanted everything that God had. I wanted to hear from him. I wanted him to be the author and the finisher of my faith. I wanted all those things from him. And if you weren't willing to go, it wouldn't matter to me because I was sold out. I was going wherever he was going. I told the Lord, I'm 19 years old, just recently filled with the Holy Spirit. And I told the Lord, Lord, I do not care where you take me on this planet. It really, I had... I had that kind of a reckless abandon. I said, I don't care where you take me. I, I don't care. As long as you go with me, I'm not afraid to go anywhere. But you got to go. Because I'm not going anywhere without you ever again. I've done it Pat's way way too long, and now I was, I'm hurt and miserable because of it. And I'm sick of Pat. I want Jesus. And that's kind of the... The, the thrust that, that made me kind of approach the Bible the way that I have all these years. And thank God I found people that knew how to, how to trust God in real time and, and do life in a significant way, walking with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so I'm, I'm approaching it from that sort of a basis. And amen. I'd rather have a real walk with God. Amen. 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 All right. Luke chapter number five. You got Luke cha- chapter five in your notes? Luke chapter 5, verse number 17, and this is a great story. You'll remember the man that was let down through the roof because he was paralyzed and the house was full. People, the word had gotten out about Jesus, and I want you to catch a phrase here in the beginning verses at the end of verse 
uh, number 17. Look, look what it says. Now, it happened on a certain day that he was teaching and that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And listen, this is the phrase, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Say, heal them. Tell your neighbor, them. Look at your other neighbor, your second choice, and tell them, them. Okay, got it? And then behold, men brought a man on a, 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 on a bed, a man who was paralyzed, whom they had sought to bring in and lay before Jesus, him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down uh, on his bed through the tilings in the midst of G uh, before Jesus. Bad day to have the small group at your house. And look at what the Bible says. And when he, Jesus, saw their faith, what did he see? Not just a roof demolition. And if you're in the house and the roof is leaving, how many of you know you're getting dirty also? Coming down, okay? When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies, and who can forgive sin but God alone? Well, God's in the room, and so, yeah, that's, that's right. He's right there. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said, Why are you reasoning in your hearts, and which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you, or to say rise up and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose before them, he rose up before them, and he took up what he was laying, had been laying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and the, 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 so they got happy with him. But listen, look at what they said. The fear came on all of them, and they said, we have seen strange things today. Don't you think that's hilarious? Man, that is a story that they are going to be telling their grandkids and their great-grandkids. Are you with me? I was at a small group one night. Boom, all of a sudden. Now, the, what I want you to catch, and the reason why I had you to repeat it, it says that, that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now, according to this story, them didn't get healed. Only him did. I want to point out that you can be this close, I mean like the air you breathe, close to the power of God and miss it and walk home the way you came. Because the power of God wasn't just there to heal him, it was there to heal them. But them didn't get it. But why? Why? Because it didn't say that they glorified God and said, I believe I receive. It didn't say that. They said strange things have happened today. I don't know if I'm ready for that strangeness. And they stiff-armed the power of God and didn't get healed. Can you see this? Hmm. Now let me, let's, let's venture into the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 Jesus unpacks the kingdom of God, and I'm telling you, it's a powerful night, powerful. And great things are, are happening. There's a multitude on the hillside, and they're all hearing Jesus just unleash the kingdom of God. You've heard it said, but I say unto you, and blessed are they, and oh, the blessedness of those who, and he's just unpacking all this, and this is how you pray. It's where the Lord's Prayer is in the book of Matthew chapter 6, and he, he says, you don't pray like the Pharisees, don't pray like the, the, the heathen, pray this, this way, and unpack it and start by saying, Father, boom, all of a sudden, no one had ever called Jehovah God Father until Jesus. And he starts unpacking all this kingdom stuff. And then he says, you know, judge not. And, and, and he's going through all the stuff. And you seek first the kingdom. And all this Magna Carta of the kingdom of God is happening here. Powerful. You would think the first thing that happened after this magnificent message called the Sermon on the Mount. You would think that whatever happened next on that same day would be significant. In other words, after unpacking the kingdom, 
you get from chapter 7 to chapter 8, the sun has not set. It's the same day. And so the first thing that happens is Jesus, Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 1 through 3. Look at it with me. And when he had come down from the mountain, what mountain? Sermon on the mount. Great multitudes followed him. So now they're out in the narthex. Kind of. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Sound familiar? And when Jesus put out his hands and touched him, saying, I am willing, be be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Amazing. Again, he believed that Jesus could. He wanted to know if he wanted to, and Jesus made it clear. And I think it's real interesting, too. There's a lot of different ways that Jesus healed. Sometimes he just sent them and said, go, your, your servants made whole, or go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Some, it was lots of different ways. How many of you are glad we don't have mud pies up here in ministry going on? Right? So we don't do mud pie ministry, but... But Jesus did, and he did it with spit. That's a big deal. Hello? How many of you are glad I'm not going to spit on you tonight? No mud pie spit ministry tonight. (laughs) Okay. What? I don't know if I gave you this as a blank or not, but I, I just I'll just say it just like I wrote it that that he believed that Jesus could heal. He just didn't know if he wanted to, and that's the condition of a lot of folks. What do you believe that God wants to do in your life? Because your believing has everything to do with your receiving. Amen. Secondly, what you don't know about Jesus' will to heal prevents real faith from ever happening. What you don't know about Jesus' will to heal, if you don't know that, It'll prevent healing from coming. Faith is based upon what you know. Write that down. It's not what you suppose. It's what you know. Are you with me? Uh, I, uh, you just mark, write underneath of that Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24. Just, mark, just write that underneath of that little spot right there. Why? Because there's 10 different kinds of New Testament prayer, 10. One of them is called the prayer of faith. Now, the prayer of faith is always based upon the known will of God. So you can't put if it be your will at the end of that one because it's, you know what the will of it, God is when you pray it. Because the, the prayer of faith is based on the known will of God. Why? Because you're going to believe you receive when you pray. Are you with me? Now, you can pray the prayer of consecration or commitment, and that is what the Lord prayed in the garden. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. How many of you remember this? It's the prayer of consecration or commitment to do the will of the Father. And so that's what that's called. You don't pray. You wouldn't play football by baseball rules, would you? Okay? Like, you know, we broke from the huddle and I hit a home run. Okay? I ran to first and made a touchdown. I'm sorry. these, These don't work together, right? Why? Because prayer is like sports. Each sport is played with a different set of rules, and so it is also with the kingdom of God. And so the prayer of intercession, standing in the gap for someone and making up the difference, the prayer of intercession, the prayer of agreement, any two shall agree as touching anything that we shall ask. It shall be done of our Father who is in heaven. Just different kinds of praying. So what I'm saying, the prayer of faith, it is the, the prayer based on the known will of God. Whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe those things that he says shall come to pass, so have whatsoever he says. Believing is mentioned once. Saying it's mentioned four times. Come on, what you say means a lot from a believing heart. Verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. When? Okay. What things soever you desire when you pray. So the when is now, while I'm praying. Believe you receive them and you'll have them. You believe you receive when you pray. You don't believe it when you see it. You don't need faith when you see it or feel it. You need it when you're 
receiving. And so that's the prayer of faith. And so, again, I, I think it's important for us to understand how faith actually works because all kinds of things called faith, but I'm just telling you the Bible makes a pretty distinctive difference in all these things, okay? It's important. And so then, so he goes from there, and he's interrupted by a centurion, chapter 8, this Matthew. This is all after the Sermon on the Mount. Lepers just been cleansed, and now you go to chapter 8, verse 5. And now when Jesus heard uh, entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant lies home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and I will heal him. How many of you now know what Jesus' intention was? With the centurion, he was going to go to his house and what was he going to do? He's going to heal that servant. Listen to his beautiful response. The centurion answered, said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you would even come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. What did he believe? You just say it and it'll come to pass. And next, here's his explanation as to why he thinks that way. He says, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, and he goes, to this one, come, and he comes, to this servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled. Come on, I want to wig Jesus out over my faith too, don't you? When he heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found so great faith, not in, even in Israel. Look at me just for a second. We'll jump back into verse 11. This guy's understanding of authority as it relates to Jesus is what caused his faith to go kaboom. Like, who do you believe he is? Jesus, that is. Who do you believe he is? To you. Not just to us. Who is he to you? Like, is he someone whose sayings and decrees and commands are optional? Well, no wonder you don't trust him very much. Because you don't obey him at all. I'm not suggesting you're in the room. I'm just saying that for people in general because I know you're believers. But let's just put third person in this. Somewhere watching on the internet, I see you out there. Okay? Okay? Again, I want you to grasp this. Who is he to you? Evidently, this guy had a great picture of this is the Messiah, the Son of God, and everything. Because I, I know what authority looks like because I, I use it all the time in every day of my life. I'm a soldier, and I say to this, I, I make orders. I don't make, I don't make requests. I give orders. And because of the authority that I stand in, things pop when I say so. And he says, I see who you are. You don't have stripes on your sleeve, but you're God, and everything obeys your voice. You don't have to come to my house. Just say it, and that infirmity is going to move off of my tormented servant. Jesus said, it's the greatest faith I've found, and I haven't found it anywhere in Israel like that. Why? Because authority makes your faith go off. It makes your faith flourish. And I just want you to get that tonight. Tonight, he is the king of all kings. Come on, let me preach this a minute. And he is the conquest. He is the king who conquest has taken the curse off of your life. Miracles are possible, and it doesn't matter what it is. Miracles are possible in not just in our life, in your life. Now, you might have to shove the devil off of the dirt of your inheritance. Come on, we're giving pictures of that. Y'all remember Shama in the lentil patch? Come on, one of David's mighty men. Come on, do you remember the story about this cat? I mean, the, the Philistines were coming down stealing their vegetables and so forth out of the garden, and everybody else took off but Shama. And he said, no, you can't, you're not stealing one more pea out of my pea patch. You can have a pea. And the Bible says he killed Philistines until his hand claved to the sword. Come on, somebody, don't turn loose of the word, and it'll kill your enemy for you. Don't give up, a, don't give up your inheritance for any Philistine. That renegade thought that comes to your mind needs to be run through with the word of God. And if you don't do it, let me ask you, who's going to do that for you? If you don't kill that thought and resist the devil and him flee from you, if you don't kill that thought, who's going to do it for you? 
You're on assignment. The name of Jesus means something coming off your lips. That when you speak that name and you know the kind of authority. And by the way, let me just tell you this. I think that you light up in the spirit realm according to the grace and the power of God working in your life. And I think you look lit when the devil sees you. And he knows whether or not you're wimped out or whether you're full. And I think he can see it in the realm of the spirit. Hello? That means when you say it, come on, how many of you want to glow like a light bulb in the Holy Ghost? In that spirit realm, amen? Come on, Jesus was transfigured before them, and man, he lit up like a light bulb. Moses spent a little bit of time in the presence of God, and they made him put a veil over his face because he lit up so much. Come on, I, come on, I think it was just a physical manifestation of what already happens in the Holy Spirit. It's my thought. It's my thought. I can have that thought. Amen? But I think the Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you, sons of Sceva? I think that I think that plays out by what the devil knows in that realm of the spirit. Jesus didn't even have, have a chance to introduce himself to that demoniac of Gadara, and he comes sliding in like Pete Rose, saying, what are you doing to torment us before the time? Why? Because Jesus was glorious. He's still glorious. And he's in the room that you're in. Isn't that sweet? For the king to be here tonight, loving on people that he loves. Well, the centurion saw all of that, and he assuredly, Jesus said, I've not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Later on in verse number 13, he says, go your way as you have believed. As you have believed, so let it be done to you. What? As you have what? It wasn't Jesus' decree. It was his own decree about who Jesus was that caused that servant's healing that day. Just, again, we sometimes suppose things in the Scripture that the Scripture doesn't say. Well, then he goes, Matthew chapter 8. We're still in Matthew chapter number 8. He goes to Peter's mother-in-law's house, and she's sick with a fever. And so he touches her hand. The fever leaves her, and she gets up and makes him dinner. How many of you know that's a good thing, reason to get healed? Amen. And... And the Bible says that that evening, a multitude came to the house, and people that they brought people who were possessed, and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Hallelujah. He was fulfilling what Isaiah saw him, him coming to do. I'm telling you, this is a great chapter. These, these things happened as a result of his Sermon on the Mount, and the very first things that he does is heal, 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 cast out devils, and bring the kingdom of God. I think it would have been a little irresponsible of Jesus to preach that kind of a message and then act like something that the kingdom of God wasn't. I've, I've said this in many healing schools. It seems to me like if sickness and disease was the will of God, and if Jesus is the perfect will of the Father, I don't only do those things which I see my Father do. That's what he said. I only say those things my Father tells me to say. And so if that, in fact, were true, it seems like if sickness was the will of God, that Jesus would have made somebody sick because it was God's will. Somewhere in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, doesn't it seem like it would show up somewhere? Except the book of Acts, when Peter was preaching at Cornelius' house, Jesus is, is known uh, uh, in the first gospel preaching that a Gentile house has heard named Cornelius. Acts chapter number 10, verse number 38, Peter says, How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, because God was with him. Let me tell you what cancer is. It's a spirit. And it has to be bound. Why? Because it has no right to be on you. Rebellious cells are not God's intention for you. Amen. Be they blood cells, tissue cells, whatever. None of that comes from your father. It all comes from the devil. And he's defeated. 
Now, I wrote in your notes, and it's a typo because I was going to do the woman with the issue of blood. I already gave you that story. That's not what's in Luke 13. But healing from a spirit of infirmity is that woman that was 18 years with a spirit of infirmity on her life. And so that's what I wanted to write in there. I just erased it in my computer, and I forgot to change the heading. So there you go. My one and only mistake of the day. Look at Luke 13, verse number 10, 13 and 16. Now he was teaching in a synagogue on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and couldn't raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she, she was made straight and glorified God. But the rulers of the synagogues were answers, answered with indignation that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And Jesus goes on to say, well, you feed your donkey on the Sabbath day. and she, Ain't she better than a donkey? Are you with me? Come on, somebody. And he embarrassed him in front of God and everybody, which he should have done. Okay? Verse 16. Jesus said, ought not this daughter woman, being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound Think of it, he says. Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? In other words, of course the answer is yes. I think that he would say the same thing about you as what I think. I think Sabbath day, not Sabbath day, a day that feels anointed or a day that feels normal. I think that you, as a child of God, ought to be loose from your infirmity on the Sabbath day, is what I think. Hmm. And I'll give you one from the Apostle Paul, and we're going to pray for people tonight. The Bible says Paul was preaching, and while he was preaching, there was a man there who was heard, heard Paul preach preached, but he had no strength in his feet. He was crippled from his mother's womb and never walked. And the Bible says that while Paul's preaching, he observed intently, he looked at him intently, saying that this man had faith to be healed. And he said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Now this guy is already doing high jumps and he's never walked before. But this is what the apostle Paul said. It didn't, it wasn't a word of the Lord. It, 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 he, the Bible just said the man had faith to be healed. He, I don't know what P- Paul was preaching, but it was good preaching. Because whatever he was preaching was producing faith in that man. And he'd never walked before, but suddenly he began to believe he could. And he said, stand up on your feet. And he leaps and walks. Come on, how many of you know you're crippled? You don't leap anywhere. And so there's four things that I want you to grab here. Hear the word and be healed. Number one, write it down, believe the word. And believe it, maybe I should put it, I should have put it this way, believe it's your word. It's God's word to you. I'm going to lay hands on you here in a minute if you're ready. And when I do, I want your faith to go off because that's not just a word from Pastor Pat. It's not just a word out of your Bible. It's God's word for you. It is a living word for you. Secondly, know that you qualify through believing. All you got to do is believe that, and you qualify. Grace made the provision available, but you still got to write the check on the deposit. Believe. Thirdly, act on the word. Amen. I mean, when I lay hands on you, the power of God's going to touch you, and you just say, thank you, Lord, I received that, and then start doing what you couldn't do before. And then number four, believe you receive when you pray, not later. Believe you receive when you pray. Amen. I'll tell you my Kim Park story, and we're going to pray for whoever needs it. But we were doing healing school. And Kim Parks was our worship leader, and she had rapid heartbeats. She had 3,000 extra heartbeats a day, 3,000 extra beats a day. 
So her heart beat like a hummingbird all the time. And it made her weak and so forth, but she learned to live through it. But at the age of 51, we buried her daddy down in Middletown. Same disease. And she had it, and the doctors knew it. And so she's right over here. Like the rows were a little different, but she's right over here. And so I come down to begin to pray for people just like we're going to do here in a minute. And she came down, and when she came down, she said she just knew she was going to get what she, I, that's what I'm talking to. Expectation is, is the atmosphere the Holy Spirit creates. And so she came down. I laid my hands on her, and as soon as I laid my hands on top of her head, she said she felt her heartbeat go to a normal beat. And it's the first time it happened since she was 13 years old. She went to the doctor that week, and the doctor listened to her heart, felt her pulse, looked at her, and didn't say a word, walked out of the room. He walked back in the room with two other white coats, and they all looked at her with their clipboards on their hands. And they said, what happened to you? Because nothing we did did that to you. She said, I went to church, my pastor prayed for me. Now, I don't know what they said after that. Listen to me carefully now. Years go by, that little boy, little boy like that size, Josh is his name. And he grew up to be about six foot one. I don't know, I think he's taller than that now. But all of a sudden, he started to slur his speech, and he started to act like he had had a stroke. They took him to the doctor and found out that he had like a, I don't know, golf ball-sized tumor behind his ear, and it was starting to affect his speech. It was pressing in on nerves in his brain, and it started to, to cause him to act like he'd had a stroke. And so she and Jason, uh, his daddy, they freak out when they find out this big cancerous tumor behind his ear. And so they just kind of freak out for a while. And, and then she said, Pastor Pat, after I wept for about a day, I remembered my own testimony. And I grabbed a hold of Jason and I said, you remember what God did for me? Let's lay our hands on our boy. They laid their hands on him, little Josh, big Josh now. In less than 48 hours, his speech cleared up. Every symptom left. They took him back to the doctor, and they did an MRI on his head, and all they could see was the dent where the tumor used to be. As because of mom and dad took God at his word through their own testimony, took what I taught at healing school, and gave it to their boy. And now he's perfect and whole and about 6'3". What I'm saying to you is you can hear and be healed. And that's kind of the point of the gospel, isn't it? That while I'm preaching the gospel, telling you of the greatness of God, that the atmosphere suddenly gets infused in every air particle with the power of heaven. The fragrance of God comes in the room and something in your heart begins to, begins to feed like, like miracle grow on your flowers. As soon as water hits it and that stuff is released down into the roots, suddenly your heart begins to ascend. Say, yes, that's for me. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that for me. Thank you, Lord. I am who you say I am, and I feel it. And so with all you, listen, God doesn't need a great deal of faith. Just faith, just faith enough to say, just touch me and I'll get it. I just need a point of contact for my faith to go off. And when you touch me, Pastor Pat, that's all I need. I'm going to get what my father said belongs to me tonight. Let me also tell you, the devil knows just how defeated he is more than anyone in the room. And we'll address him with the kind of authority that needs to be used. And then you're just free to receive.
If you need healing in your body, I want you to line up in just one line along the front here. And I'm, I've got some ushers to help us here and so forth. So ushers, come up here real close where you can kind of direct traffic. But if you need healing in your body tonight, and by the way, I would like for this to work this way, if that's okay. I want the people that are not standing in for someone else, because we can agree in prayer together, and we'll do that. Right now, I just want the people that need a touch in their body, I, I want them to come line up first, if that's okay. All right? All right, so wherever you are, come. If you've got children, I heard, well, I know we got one uh, child that needs healing, and so we'll bring them up, and we're going to pray for them as well. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on up. We love you today. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Some of you have known Jesus, your Savior, for a long time, but you're about to meet him tonight as Jesus, your healer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, how many of you know Jesus doesn't just have healing? He is healing. Amen. 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 God loves you tonight, and I'm so thankful. I've got such confidence in my spirit. You're just going to get what you came for tonight. Amen. Amen. Why not? Amen. All these testimonies that I've given you, Jackie and I, um, I just feel to share this one too, because who's got a growth that you need to disappear? Anybody have a growth that needs to disappear, a tumor or some kind of growth? Okay. So uh, Amy Uriah is a doctor's wife. They're originally from Ethiopia, but she was a member of our church. And Amy, uh, she um, came up because she had a, it, it was a lump on her breast, but it was topical enough or close enough to the surface, she could actually feel it like an egg. And uh, so she was gonna go get a biopsy and all of that sort of thing. Well, she came up in our service and she said, I, I, I want Jesus to heal me. and so. So the bottom line was Jack and I prayed for her. She went immediately to the bathroom because she felt the power of God hit her. She reached and she felt and she couldn't feel it. So she goes in the bathroom. She, she does a, a breast examination. She can't find it anywhere. She goes home and tells her husband, who's a doctor, I'm healed. He said, no, it's, it was there last week. It's still there now. You just don't feel it right now. We're still going to go have it biopsy. So they went in. And they went in right where that thing was supposed to be. They did all the scans. There's nothing to biopsy. That sucker's gone. Why? Because Jesus is a cancer killer. You speak to the mountain and say, be removed and be cast into the sea. Shall not doubt in the heart, but shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass. You'll have whatsoever you say. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. And you'll have them. Hallelujah. So I love you today, and it's impossible for me to love you more than he does. And so just prepare yourself, and let's just all receive together. Come on, can we all begin to just magnify God? Look how many folks need a touch from heaven. Amen. And by the way, we're going to want your testimonies, all of you. And so it, uh, even if you don't go to church here, I want your testimony of what God's done for your life. And take it, take it to your pastor. If this is not your home church, just take it to your pastor or wherever, and we just want you to know that today God loves you, and we love your pastor too. And so we thank God we're building the kingdom of God together. Amen? Amen. You ready? Yeah, what is, what is it that you need?